but I'm just taking a different approach to looking at resume. And right now, North Carolina has got a resume that even though they haven't played any great teams, the last two weeks, they've played teams that have a heartbeat, that have a pulse, that are top 40 teams in the country. And they're three and oh, and there's very few undefeated teams left. And, and so I've got them ranked really high as well. I don't think they're as good as my ranking, but I'm just basing it on a resume. Gotcha. And this will all work itself out. It's so hard to rank teams when there's zero interconference play between power five teams. It's, it's extremely difficult. Like we really don't know. Think of um, all the games that we have missed that we've been robbed based on COVID that would give us a better barometer of the conferences. No USC, Alabama, no Ohio state, Oregon on down the line, Penn state, Virginia tech. We're supposed to play all sorts of games like that. North Carolina, you talk about a barometer for North Carolina. I was looking forward to these two games. They had UCF and Auburn Mm non-conference. Now we would know right now because they would have already played those two games. We would know (laughs) a pretty good feel for North Carolina football right now. Mm. And uh, North Carolina will get themselves a chance to prove themselves. They have some um, some decent teams ahead on their schedule, most notably Notre Dame. Um, I think they all t- also have to play Pitt, if I'm not uh, mistaken. So we'll see what North Carolina is made of. They're going to have to stop um, kind of just barely skating by these lower level teams. If they really want to be what many people consider to be at the top tier, you know, outside of Clemson of the ACC – then they really need to prove it. They need to start putting some of these teams away convincingly. Now they did you know, score wise. They did last week, I guess. Uh, but we, we, again, we don't really know how good Virginia tech is either yet. I mean, they've only played a couple of games. So Virginia anyway, tech was missing 15 players in that game. They were well, missing. Their- Virginia tech was missing 22, the game before that and 22 <laughs> the game before that. And did it didn't seem to bother. Now, of course, that'll eventually catch up to you. But, One uh, starting corner, two both starting safeties in their left yeah. tackle. Yeah. This is the problem, though. I mean, a, a lot of teams are having this issue. So it's not just Virginia Tech. I mean, that is a, a significant amount of players to be, <laughs> to be missing for anybody. But we've uh, a lot of teams miss games and delayed games and have players out and have coaches out. College game day will be at Georgia versus Alabama and Tuscaloosa. Alabama is currently, at least as of right before the show today, a five-point favorite against the Georgia Bulldogs. Any preliminary thoughts on this? First of all, pick pick your winner. Alabama gets respect from Vegas, and they've earned it. And uh, if you believe in earning uh, a point spread, uh, but if you just watch the teams play, Georgia's the better football team right now. That doesn't mean I think Alabama's not going to win the game. And they are at home. I would think that they're going to allow eighteen to 20,000 people in the game, something in that range. So it's not going to be the typical atmosphere, but it's going to be something. And if you're Dan Mullen, did you hear this comment from Dan Mullen that, that their game was, you know, just greatly impacted by the crowd, you know? Uh, <laughs> what if there had been 100,000 people there on a normal year? They, they had no shot then, I guess, huh? This is a guy that's coached in the SEC for 15 years. He's walking in stadiums every week with 80 to 100,000 people, and suddenly they're intimidated by 19,000 people in the stands. That was a uh, – what's the words that the kids use these days? Cringy. That was a cringy uh, press conference there with Dan Mullen. He he would have been better off just leaving his mouth shut on that one. Yes. Just, you know, you lost. Move on. You weren't expecting to lose, but it happened. Um, So, man, Georgia, Alabama – Georgia better look at that old mess, man. I'd be on the phone with Lane Kiffin like now, <laughs> man, that Lane Kiffin offense just, I'm telling you, if, if you see any of the highlights or are able to just go back and catch like the condensed version, like old mess was playing flag football with Alabama's defense. It, like I had Alabama fans calling me last night that were like, you know, we're sick to our stomachs and they just won by 15 points because yeah. just couldn't, they just, I'm, I'm, they're not used to watching that. And I said, well, part of it's just, that's the way football's played now, but it is alarming. Uh, and so George is so locked in on defense. This is going to be what's the, what's the stat that's out there. And it was added to last weekend where Nick Saban does not lose to his former assistants. And Lane yeah. Kiffin was the latest, even though it was an impressive showing, it was still a two touchdown win. And Nick Saban's like 21 and 0, and here comes Kirby Smart. And you just, 
there's that reservation that Nick Saban's always going to find a way to win. And even though Alabama has issues, they're going to fix them in a week and they're at home. And, you know, he's going to be, he's going to out coach Kirby smart, just like he did in the national championship game a few years ago. when Georgia looked like the better team, most of the game, but to measure these two teams going into the game, Georgia's a complete team and Alabama is an offensive juggernaut that is terrible on defense right now. So, my gut feeling is that George is a better team and George is going to win this game. I mean, that's my gut feeling. Now, again, just, just like, and I'm not comparing Georgia and Alabama to Miami and Clemson because it's not, it's really not even close. I mean, George, I mean, Georgia has been right there with Alabama for several years now, and it's just sort of haven't got over that hump in the big game. I mean, but that hasn't happened with Miami. Miami's last three times they played Clemson, we just got uh, yeah. blown out. But so what I mean by this is, is that I still have sort of a bias in the back of my mind towards Alabama because Georgia hasn't been able to beat them recently. But my, I, I think Georgia's defense is so suffocating. I know Alabama is going to, they're going to score a few. It's not going to be a situation like it was with Tennessee. Alabama is going to score some points. Uh, and they, they've, listen, they've got five stars upon five stars and, and, and Mac Jones is playing well. But uh, at the end of the day, like you said, I think this could just I think George is a more complete team and all they have to do. And the biggest knock on Georgia, especially from Georgia fans themselves, is that there are, our, our offense is outdated. We can't move the ball and score a lot of points like like these other teams are doing right now. I don't know if you need to in this game. I think what, <laughs> you need to just play old school Georgia football and you can come away with a win here. I really believe that. I mean, you could, as long as you play, the, limit the amount of touchdowns that Alabama gets and uh, and run the ball effectively and just don't turn the ball over. I think you'll they'll be there at the fourth quarter and maybe you can pull it out. Yeah, I'm trying to envision this because when you're talking about Alabama making plays and they might have the best offense in the country, I think there's two or three, four, possibly when Ohio State steps on the field that are right there with them. But they just put up 63 against a bad Ole Miss defense. But, you know, you can only score so many points. So once you get into the 60s near 70, you only can get the football so many times to score. They pretty much just scored a scored at will, uh, that if Georgia comes away from that game, having given up 30 to 35, then that's probably what I would expect because Alabama is going to make plays, but Georgia's defense is going to win some series and it's just going to be two tremendous units facing each other. So I'm envisioning, can Georgia's offense score the 35 that they need to win a 35, 31 kind of game? And they did against Tennessee. Um, and Alabama's defense isn't playing like to make score comparisons, man, Alabama's not even matching up that well. Uh, you know, Tennessee took care of Missouri in a sense better than Alabama did. Um, yeah, I think Georgia is the more complete team. And if, and if we see a game next week in Tuscaloosa where Alabama looks like old Alabama and they come away and they win in whatever fashion, then I will shake my head and say, there we go again. Nick Saban was ready. Alabama proved on a big stage when they needed to. They pulled it together. But Georgia's a better team right now. Thank you, uh, Joseph Gibson. And also, thank you, Definition 409. If Bama score 28, they win. Uh, Georgia can't score that against Alabama. UGA loses two games this year. Well, I'm, I'm looking at their schedule in my, in my mind, not physically. And I'm trying to find two losses on there. I guess maybe Florida, although Florida talking about talking about bad defense. Holy crap! Do you know that Florida gives up more yards per play on average than Oklahoma does? And they played Ole Miss. Okay, they played well South Carolina. They could, they could play the Kansas City Chiefs for all I care. They're more than Oklahoma. I know, but I'm just looking at teams that they faced. More than Oklahoma. <laughs> Oklahoma is the, I know it's awful. The gold standard for bad defense, and Florida's an SEC team. So, any anyway, I get what you're saying. Uh, I don't know if uh, here's what I'd say. I would if I was to bet this game right now, I would take Georgia with the points, for sure. Oh yeah, I would too with the points. Uh, I think that they can pull it out, but they're still, and 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 people try to pretend like this isn't a thing. It is a thing. There's a mental hurdle, it's even for the coaches, not just for the players, maybe mm -hmm. especially for the coaches, maybe especially for Kirby Smart. 
because we've seen him have the game in the bag against Alabama twice and just made bonehead decisions coming down to the end, overthinking things, oversimplifying things, trying being too conservative, and in some cases being too aggressive with that crazy fourth down try, uh, conversion when he easily could have won the game without even uh, trying that trick play. So uh, I think it gets in your mind. Nick Saban, on the other hand, doesn't have that problem, particularly against Georgia in the in the recent uh, recent years. So. I don't know, man. This is gonna be a great game. I'm gonna I'm gonna say Georgia at minus, at, or I'm sorry, at plus five. I'll give a I'll give a more definite opinion on uh, who I think will win the game outright as we get closer to the game. I don't know. This is gonna be a a good one. Yeah, I take the points, even though man, there's gonna be so many points in this game. I guess. Well, I think we're in the mid range thirties in this one, but yeah, I go with the five points, and I'm gonna reserve my my winner of the game. Outright winner for later. Next one on the list. Up. Now, this one might not interest a lot of people, but it does me. Because how does Miami rebound? Yep. After such a disappointing, uh, soul-wrenching loss to Clemson, and that's really what it was. They could try to tell you different, but it's true. Pittsburgh and Miami. This is one that I had circled on the calendar before they even played Clemson. It said this is a game that Miami could drop. Now, Pittsburgh, on the other hand, has gone out and lost two weeks in a row now. So they also have something to prove. They can't afford to lose another game uh, either. Uh, which t- the Miami is a 10-point favorite in this game. This is a very good Pittsburgh defense. Uh, I don't know, man. 10? Huh? 10 points. Too, too much. Too much. I think it's too much, too. Pitt's playing close in this one. Yeah, I agree with you. I think I would take Pittsburgh with the points. I'm not sure. I think Miami's a better team, obviously, overall. I'm not sure if Pittsburgh can move the ball very well against anybody at this point. They're, they're completely a defensive team right now. I'm not going to take into account noon game in Miami, no crowd. I don't think it much matters where they're playing. Well, most games in Miami are noon games with no crowd. So that's, that's not. <laughs> that doesn't change. COVID has not changed the <laughs> Miami <COVID> scene. <laughs> Uh, so anyway, I think the, I, the only reason I thought that was interesting is because both these teams are coming off a loss. Uh, how will Miami respond? This, this is we'll get. We got to see a little bit about who Miami was when they played a great team in Clemson, but coming off of a loss like that, playing a team like Pitt, that a team that they should beat, how can they respond? That's what I want to see. Georgia Tech plays at noon against your boys. Um, that's not going to be much of a game, but I will credit Georgia Tech for dismantling Louisville on Friday night. That was. Um, a big win for them to get into that. They've now won two ACC games, but mm-hmm. I'm going to be divided between Pitt, Miami, and I love this Kentucky, Tennessee game. Oh, yeah. Let's see here. I think I had that down. They're playing it new. I meant to get the. I'm assuming Kentucky's favorite in that game, but it can't be by much, though. You think at Tennessee? Yeah. I, I'm going to say Tennessee's like a six point favorite. You could be right. In that case, I would probably take Kentucky uh, with the points anyways. I don't know. That game could be a pick 'em, as far as I'm concerned. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to be locked in on that game. And, and I'd be surprised if it was a blowout. I think it's going to be real tight. How about NC State? Are they the most surprising team in the ACC so far this year? Yes. They've got it. Yeah, they beat Pitt a couple of weeks ago as a two touchdown underdog. And uh, they already hit a win against Wake. They're three and one now. And now they're three and one. They are three and one. They're scoring a ton of points. They got to be averaging over, th- well, almost 40 yards a game. I know they scored 50 against, fi- over 50 against Wake or right at 50. Yeah. Yeah. They, they beat Virginia pretty easily from what yeah. I remember in terms of the score. It's one of the many games I DVR over the weekend, but I, I'm never going to watch it. Like I've got this thing in my head that I got to see everything and I DVR tons of games. And then as it turns out, I'm like, yeah, I'm not watching NC state in Virginia and they're playing Duke. They should be a substantial favorite at home against Duke. We'll go to Duke. four and one. Guess what the line is. Uh, NC state's um, four and a half. Oh, I was going to say seven. Four and a half is what I saw, what I looked at right before the uh, thing. So I, that's a surprise. I mean, Duke is not good. No, they're they, not good they are at all. surprisingly bad, actually, even for Duke standards. Uh-huh. 
They're they're getting so, uh, trounced by like three scores every week. They are. And so I that's a that's a weird line to me. Four and a half. I take NC State with that, but uh, they are just they've got to be the most surprising team to me. I mean, they were at the bottom of the barrel. They were bottom two in the ACC last year. Um. So and and I don't know. I mean, right now they have a better record than. Uh, I mean, they're they're in the top three in the ACC. So. And if I recall right, I selected them as having the worst schedule, meaning, meaning the easiest schedule. It's good for them. I don't think they play like three of the top four teams. They do have one of the easier schedules. They don't play Notre Dame. Well, no, they did play Notre Dame. Oh, are you talking about NC State? NC State. NC State. Okay. Yeah. So. Uh, well, they don't play Clemson, which is somebody they usually play every year because they're, they're normally in the same division. So they escape that. I must. I don't think they play. Her. I don't think so either. And I'm not even sure if they play Miami. They don't play Miami. Yeah, so, that's why I pegged them to possibly yeah. not a few wins more than we expect. Yeah. Yeah. Easy schedule. So they do, and that's so that that works out in their favor. If they continue to win, then we might see them. And wouldn't that be something? <laughs> Man, there there are a lot of interesting games. They're not necessarily championship impacting games in conferences, but like Ole Miss and Arkansas, they're better than we expected. Mm -hmm. Texas A&M turns around from their big win against Florida. They go to Mississippi State and Mike Leach. You know, LSU and Florida, this LSU, all the issues they're having, they've given up a zillion points, more points than they've ever given up in the first three games of the season at Florida. Trying to name the third best team in the SEC is hard. Right now, I still have to say it's Florida. Yeah, I, I knew what the hell I was going to go there with that. I was going to say, but I mean, their defense is so bad so far. I think the Ole Miss and, and Florida are comparable, but obviously there's a head to head matchup there. Florida won the game, so you, you got to give the edge out there to Florida. But I, outside of Georgia and Alabama, I just don't see anybody else that's, I guess, Florida. That'd be the only one. Well, right? let's see Texas AM play some more. Yeah. Jimbo, big win for Jimbo. His first uh, top five win. He yeah. was 0 and 7. Yeah. Still not sold on, on Jimbo or the or the Aggies, but that was that was a good win. North Carolina, Florida State. So North Carolina has Florida State this week and then NC State next week. Mm. Um, so I'm assuming that it's probably two wins. And NC State could be one that could give them some trouble based on all the things that we just said. Sure. Uh, they are only a 12 point. This now this is shocking too. Only a 12 point favorite against Florida State. Now the game is in Tallahassee. Not that that makes a huge. Even that, let's say that makes a two point difference. That that, that makes it even worse. Then it's only 10 points. But then again, you know, it's one thing to dominate a game or be much better. It's another thing to necessarily hang on to that point spread because, you know, Florida State just got back from South Bend. They were a 21-point underdog. They stayed within 16. Yeah. On the road at Notre Dame. Something that hurt me there, pigskin, was Notre Dame was down to the two or three-yard line in the last minute, and they didn't take it in. So you lost that one. Lost that one. You yeah. lost that one. Last but not least, LSU in Florida. Yeah. That should be huge. Yeah. Usually is. And and it is for Florida, but um, we pretty much have to write off LSU. LSU had Mississippi State, Vandy, and Missouri to start the season. So you would have thought, okay, they're LSU. We know they lost a lot, but at least they got time to prepare for the Alabamas and Auburns and Floridas with this easy beginning of their season with Mississippi State, Vandy, and Mizzou. Well, they lose two of the three. How much of this is due to the obvious losing 19 players to the NFL, losing your offensive guru and Joe Brady, another still other offensive coordinator from last year, and losing your defensive coordinator to take the head coaching job at Baylor? So out of those three things, I mean – I'm going to go with, first of all, LSU loses a lot of players to the NFL every year. So that's, 
maybe a little bit more than normal last year. Yep. I know that Joe Brady went to the Panthers, but they still have that offense implemented. They still have the same offensive coordinator there. He know he's no idiot. He knows how to run the offense that Joe Brady, the passing offense that Joe Brady had in there. It's got to be Dave Aranda. This is the missing piece right now. And that's what I'm thinking because the the offense, you can't expect them to score the points and put up the yardage that they did last year. That was all time, right. 60 touchdown passes. Miles Brennan might throw 40 touchdown passes, then they might go five and five because they're scoring points. You know, they were throwing the ball in the end zone to put up 48. They put up 41 at Mizzou. Uh, so they've been putting up 40 plus points in these games, but uh, the defense is just, ah, man. I, I, yeah, Bo Pelini has to be on a hot seat for a coordinator right now. Yeah, hot seat only if three games into the season. That's uh, that's uh, where was where's Pelini before LSU? I'm trying to I'm having drawing a blank here. He so he was the head coach of Youngstown State. He right. was the defensive coordinator at uh, LSU when they won the 07 national championship. 07, right. But then he got the head coaching job at Nebraska. Yeah. Uh, definition four nine. Thank you, sir. Uh, uh, Coach O is Gene Chizik. Oh, won a national championship, and then with because he had the perfect pieces around him, and then when they left, he turned into average Joe. I see what you're saying here. Uh, thank you, Leon. You you are a stand up guy, sir. He says a uh, good game, Pete and Clemson. Uh. Leon's a he's he always shows up and he's always very nice. Uh, a lot of these guys that have been ripping me, and rightly so, for the past couple of weeks, I won't see some of them again. So Leon is here. Thank you. All right, Mark, we're running out of time. I do want to let uh, everybody know where you can find me every Monday here with Mark at noon. You can find me every Tuesday over on Uncle Lou on YouTube. For the lunch money show at noon. Then I do a show Tuesday night at 9 p.m. with my man Bobby Durkins right here on this channel. Wednesday night call in show every 10, every Wednesday night at 10 p.m., where all of you fine folks out there can call and put all of your grievances on me. You can yell at me, you can do whatever you want, just as long as you call. Then I, again on Thursday, we do the lunch money show at, again at noon over on Uncle Lou's channel and Friday night call in show at 10 p.m. That's one of my favorite call in shows. Of the week, Mark, where can we find you? Mark Rogers TV, just search it in YouTube. Still trying to work out uh, since I have left my job and I'm here all the time, full time. Still trying to work out a schedule that everybody can rely on. So we'll get that out to everybody soon. But uh, we're doing live streams and dropping videos constantly over at uh, Mark Rogers TV.